गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज़ दर्शनी श्रीवास्तवा एंड माई टॉपिक इज़ चैनल कैपेसिटी फॉर माइमो सो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द कंसेप्ट बिहाइंड चैनल कैपेसिटी फॉर माइमो सो हेयर इज इट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एल बिगिन विथ इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट सो सिंस माई टॉपिक इज़ चैनल कैपेसिटी फॉर माइमो सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट डू यू मीन बाई माइमो As we know, a MIMO is a multiple input and multiple output. Therefore, in a MIMO, it consists of an antenna technology for wireless communication, in which there are multiple antennas are used at both the source and receiver. That is, uh, in MIMO, uh, we see that there are multiple antennas uh, connected in both the receiver and at the transmitter stations. Therefore. therefore in mimo creating multiple version of the same signal provides more opportunities for data to reach the receiving antenna without being affected by fading which increases signal to noise ratio and error rate as we know the antennas at each end of the communication circuits are combined to minimize the error so we know that ki our main aim is to minimize the error and that's why the antennas at each end of the communication circuits they are combined together to minimize the errors so that data can be optimized its speed could be optimized its performance should be increased improved and this can be done by enabling data to travel over many signal paths at the same time Here is a particular diagram uh, in which I am showing about uh, the various ways in which the MIMO can be connected. Here we can see TX which stands for transmitter and RX which stands for receiver. Now, why we are needing MIMO means uh, why there is a compulsory needing in like uh, in we see that in a uh, wireless communication channels today we are needing MIMO technique. Why? Can anyone say? okay so i'll explain that in a mimo technology what we see that the major advantages are there in a mimo a mimo system provides better signal strength even without the clear line of sight as it utilizes the bounced and reflected rf transmissions the higher throughput allows better quality and quantity of the video sent over the network in mimo the multiple data streams reduces the number of lost data packets which results in better video or audio quality wifi long term evolution networks and many other radio wireless and rf technologies are now using the mimo technologies it it is so because uh, the mimo technology is increasing link capacity and spectral efficiency combined with the improved link reliability using what we were previously seen as interfering paths even now many there are many mimo wireless routers on the market and as this rf technology is becoming more and more widespread more mimo routers and other items of the wireless mimo equipments will be seen so uh, friends uh, here in this picture we can see that uh, shows a typical modern wifi router using a mimo technology with the multiple antennas So up till now, I have said that MIMO technologies are basically used to increase link capacity and more better spectral efficiency. Let's move forward. Now, from where MIMO came, what are its development and what is its history? MIMO technology has been developed over many years. Not only did the basic MIMO concepts needs to be formulated, but in addition to this, new technologies needed to be developed to enable MIMO to be fully implemented. You know that up till now, MIMO has not been fully implemented. In some wireless technologies, MIMO are still in use, but we need more advanced technology so that MIMO can be implemented to its highest amount. new levels of the processing were needed to allow some of the features of spatial multiplexing as well as to utilize some of the gains of spatial diversity now up up till the 1990s we see that spatial diversity was often limited to a systems which switch between the two antennas or combine the signals to provide the test signal best signal also various forms of beam switching were implemented but in view of the levels of processing involved and degree of the processing available the systems were generally relatively limited we see uh, friends that uh, earlier technologies in earlier technologies there were so com- so much complexities and so much processing were required in that particular period mimo was not and developed was not implemented and that's why uh, the users were very uh, they find very difficult to uh, communicate 
navigate over the wireless channel. And however, with the additional levels of processing power that started to become available, it was possible to utilize both the spatial diversity and the full spatial multiplexing. The initial work on the MIMO system focused on basic spatial diversity. Here, the MIMO system was used to limit the degradation caused by multipath propagation. However, this was only a first step as system then started to utilize the multipath propagation to advantage, turning the additional signal path into what might effectively be considered as additional challenge to carry additional data. It means uh, in a multi, we know that in multipath propagation, there are various paths and we are intending, we know that in diversity, we are intending that key message signal would pass through a various multipath channels so that after at the receiver side, it would be combined to, pr to produce the best receive signal to the users. And uh, this all became possible with the help of MIMO technology and it's relevant. Now the two main formats which we see for MIMO in which the MIMO are basically based are the spatial and the spatial multiplexing and spatial diversity. That is uh, in a spatial diversity, spatial diversity is main, uh, mainly used in this narrower sense often refers to a transmit and receiver diversity. Okay, so friends, spatial diversity, uh, we are referring to both the transmit and receive diversity. These two methodologies are used to provide improvements in a signal to noise ratio. That is with the help of spatial diversity, we can increase S SNR, that is signal to noise ratio. And they are characterized by improving the reliability of a system with respect to various forms of fading. Like the various forms of fadings which we see, uh, this can be improved with the help of diversity technique, we know that. Whereas in case of spatial multiplexing, this form of the MIMO was mainly used to provide additional data capacity. We know that in case of multiplexing, various users' data are being multiplexed, that is they are added together and then they are sent through a channel. That's why in a multiplexing, data capacity is increased by utilizing the different path to carry additional traffic, that is data throughput is increased and that's why we can say it, data reliability is increased, information capability is released and users are getting more benefited. Now the standard MIMO configurations. The MIMO radio system utilized multiple antennas in order to send and receive multiple data streams at once. Yani ki MIMO ko basically uh, introduced kiya gaya tha so that it would receive and send multiple data streams. The number of the antennas needed is defined by a radio manufacturer based on what they determine will work for an optimal transmission and reception with their particular hardware and software. That is, its design was based upon the mm, that radio manufacturer. So the typical configuration of the MIMO which we see are 2 into 2 MIMO that is 2 transmit and 2 receiver antennas, 3 into 3 MIMO that is 3 transmitter and 3 receiver antenna. 4 into 4 MIMO in which 4 uh, transmit antenna and 4 receiver antenna and 8 into 8 MIMO in which 8 transmitting antenna and 8 receiver antenna. And generally speaking, the more antennas a system has a more simultaneous data streams can be transmitted at once. It means at a particular time, more number of data streams can be transmitted from a transmitter side to a receiver side, therefore improving a radio link. However, individual system setups, current physical and the RF environment condition and advances in the radio technology means that more antenna doesn't always mean better system performances because with the increase of antenna, uh, data streams would increase and with that particular increase, we know that our channel conditions are not that suitable. Okay, so sometimes uh, it would not be better if to increase more and more number of antennas. Now it is the antenna selection that is what are the antennas we select for MIMO techniques like we know that every MIMO system will be configured differently based upon the particular needs of the users operating the system. So however some generalized suggestions for different operating scenarios are outlined yani what are the antennas which we can use. The first antenna I listed is handheld or body worn tactical MIMO radio system. It means it can be handheld. It means the, it is for those users who will be wearing the radio in a pouch or vest or carrying the radio along with the other equipments. Lightweight omnidirectional antennas are an ideal choice. 
It means in this a lightweight omnidirectional antennas are the ideal choice. The another choice that can be utilized are body worn antennas. Then second is the vehicle mounted MIMO radios that is for mobile system. Uh, these antennas will be installed in the vehicle and in this um, both omnidirectional and directional can be fitted. Whereas third is directional and sector infrastructure antennas in which for more MIMO coverage of specific area, panel and sector antennas are often used. Now these are the recent advancement in MIMO technologies. So some of the recent advancements which we can see in the MIMO technologies are MIMO antenna array design, non-conventional and reconfigurable MIMO antenna, radio wave propagation simulation, MIMO signal processing, multi-user and massive MIMO, hybrid beam forming and full digital signal processing, maximization of network capacity, then number of served users, enhancing the energy efficiency, minimization of cost per bit, use of small cells and heterogeneous cells, use of the millimeter waves and beyond, adaptability to new services and devices, then artificial intelligence and machine learning, MIMO for IoT and emerging technologies. So see, these are some of the recent advancements which are coming in the, uh, which are going to be introduced in the coming era, friends. Okay. Now, what do you mean by a massive MIMO? Massive MIMO is basically a new wireless access technology in 5G in which both the sub gigahertz and millimeter wave bands are used. Since its inception is about a decade ago, it has evolved from the wild academic idea to become a core technology. Okay, so it, this is all about a massive MIMO and massive MIMO is basically used in a line of sight communication. Massive MIMO is a multi-user MIMO which can provide uniformly good services to a wireless terminal in high mobility environments. The key concept is to equip base stations with array of many antennas which are used to serve many terminals simultaneously. Massive MIMO mainly operate in a time division duplexing mode and the downlink mean forming exploits the uplink downlink reciprocity of radio propagation. This makes Massive MIMO entirely scalable with respect to a number of base station antennas. Base station in the Massive MIMO operate autonomously. It means it uh, repeatedly occurs with no sharing of payload data or a channel side information which makes it more um, privacy that is uh, it has a more good security and privacy. Now these are the benefits of Massive MIMO. I'll keep in a short that uh, the primary benefits of the Massive MIMO are that it increases network capacity, improves the coverage, uh, have a more better user experience. Okay, so these are some of the benefits of the Massive MIMO friends. With the Massive MIMO, we can have more uh, cell size, more coverage area. And even in the locations which have the relatively weaker network coverage, their Massive MIMO can also be used. And these are the enhancement in channel capacity for MIMO coding technique. So what are the various advancements which has been done and which are being doing in the coming scenario? In a wireless communication system, it is required to achieve high data rate with a proper bit error rate. So a high level of the transmitted power is required to combat the intense fading channel condition. And as we know by the Shannon's limit theorem that uh, the, the channel capacity should always be greater than the information rate. And therefore, this particular theory proves that if the channel capacity is higher than the data rate then the information is reliably transmitted and therefore to increase the channel capacity the signal to noise ratio or a bandwidth must be increased and it is not allowed but it should be limited. The wireless communication system divided are uh, into four types CISO that is single input and single output, CMO single input and multiple output and MISO multiple input and single output and MIMO multiple input and multiple output. So we have studied about MIMO now this is the formula for how to be calculate capacity of wireless communication and the capacity can be calculated by a given formula of c of mimo that is log 2 determinant of i n r x plus signal to noise ratio n t x into h to the power h bits per second per hertz so this is the particular formula for mimo and it is very easy okay and in this, this SNR is the average signal to noise ratio. NRX is the number of the antennas at a receiving part. NTX is the number of the antenna at transmitting part. H is the normalized channel gain matrix. H is the channel response matrix. And H is the Hermitian response students. Okay. 
and some of the proposed MIMO systems which can be recovered or which can be discovered in the new feature are that is 2 into 2 MIMO LMOT STBC codes. So it's just a short about LMOT code. It, these are just the implementations of 2 into 2 MIMO codes. So here's a just diagram that is in this transmitter there are two transmitting antenna and two receiver antenna that is 2 into 2 MIMO. And the second one is 3 into 4 MIMO that is in this there are 3 transmitter and 4 receivers. So these are uh, friends like the upcoming MIMO implementations which can be done. I have not covered uh, the uh, um, detailing about it but I have just listed about the basic things about that. That is it contains of 3 antenna and 4 receiver antennas and uh, it is still establishing and they provide a very greater performance in a multipath environment. And it's my conclusion for my lecture that is the various research work which I proposed about the enhancement in channel capacity for MIMO has a greater impact in current scenario and in the current wireless scenario. I presented what are the recent developments ongoing in the MIMO technology. Then various research papers short summary was also presented by me. In addition, I also emphasized the work on massive MIMO technology which is the current era of 5G technology. In future, various advancements in MIMO will inherently play a major role in our lives and is playing today too also. And these are the references friends which I considered. In this, I also included some of the research papers which I have taken to um, explain you the various MIMO implementations like LMOT and STBC codes. So that's all and thank you very much. Thank you for being patient. Thank you so much.